Right now, for the next few minutes, a man who also is running for Congress, in fact, running for Senate. He is Dr. Bronco Radulovacki, psychiatrist out of Atlanta, just back to Atlanta. was in Washington over the weekend, that reenactment of the 1963 March on Washington. We spoke with him some weeks ago as he was kicking off the campaign. He joins us now. Dr. Radulovacki, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate your invitation to be on your program this morning. I'll get to the Senate race here in a moment. I'm curious about this weekend in Washington. Now, the, the first thing that struck me, and I watched a lot of the coverage, I, I don't know that people have said they're disappointed in the turnout. I looked up at one point while Congressman Lewis was speaking, and I was wondering where all the people were. It didn't look as though they had quite as many people as they might have anticipated. Well, I don't, I don't know what the final count was. Certainly being there, you, you, I mean, you, you really got the sense that there were lots and lots, thousands of people around. It was a wonderful, it was a wonderful event. Uh, what was it like? I mean, to, to John Lewis especially was the only guy left who spoke in 1963, the only surviving speaker to take to the podium as he did Saturday. What was it like to be there for that event? Well, I think it was inspirational. It really was. It really brought the sense of the of that of that initial march in 1963. It really made it seem real to me in a way that it hadn't been before. Being around so many people, um, there was so much enthusiasm, so much energy. But it was positive energy. People were just so so joyous to, to just to be part of that event. Now, your Senate campaign, and as we talked uh, three or four weeks ago when we had you on, you were just rolling out that campaign, just getting started. Uh, you have Michelle Nunn, who has now officially and formally tossed her hat into the ring, has the measure of name recognition that a Dr. Radulovsky will not. Uh, we addressed that in anticipation of her candidacy. Now that anticipation is, in fact, reality. She is running. She's out there crossing the state and raising money, doing those things that you'll have to do as well. How do you overcome uh, the fact that people know that name and not necessarily yours? Well, I think you start with the, with the grassroots. I mean, you start by, by traveling the state. You start by meeting people. You're going to different, different events, and you get your message out that way. And I don't mean to, you know, keep casting aspersions on the state of your campaign, but you do understand that such national attention as there will be on this race, uh, and certainly such national money as there will be on this race, the party's going to be backing her rather than you to accept that premise. Well, what, what I accept is, is, is what we need to get done in this country. And I don't think the answers are coming out of Washington. In fact, I know the answers are not coming out of Washington. So what we need is a Georgia solution for, to, to, and someone to represent Georgia. And so that's what my candidacy is about. That's what we're going to bring to Washington is a different perspective, a different mindset, different energy, and different passion for helping people, not only in Georgia, but for the, in the rest of the country. All right, let's talk about some of those things, some of the issues that are out there being addressed right now. You're, you're a doctor. Uh, what do you make of Obamacare, Republican efforts to repeal it, to delay its implementation? The Obama administration delaying the implementation of key components of its signature legislation. What do you make of this? Well, I think it's wise to, to, to be thoughtful about how this is going to be implemented. It's a, it's a big, big piece of legislation. Like any uh, uh, piece of this size, it's going to take time and it's going to get, take thought and effort. And so I think it's wise to, you know, to, to really do it in, in a stepwise fashion. I also think that ultimately this is going to be a success. I think the health care reform is something that we need. We need here in Georgia and we need it in the country because people need access to health care, period. Well, what about these companies, Georgia-based companies, UPS, Delta, and again, talking with Dr. Bronco Radulovsky, U.S. Senate candidate, Democratic Senate candidate, UPS saying, for example, 15,000 spouses of employees not going to cover their health insurance, Delta saying it's going to take a $100 million hit, and by the way, that's next year on its health insurance cost. Uh, as a Delta flyer, I don't see any way that doesn't land in my lap. What does this do to the cost of things? What does this do to jobs? We're seeing employers all over the place, across the board, government employees, in fact, who are seeing their hours cut, uh, going from full-time to part-time. That's happening everywhere. What do we do about that? Well, I think there's a lot of confusion about what the costs uh, of this health care implementation really are going to be. So I don't think anyone knows the answer to that. I think I've read, I've read several things that indicate that over, over time, 
that the cost is going to be decreased with this with this health care implementation. So I think I think the story is, is yet to be told. I think the jury is still out, and I think we need to do our best to, to implement this in, in a practical, in a common sense way to make it effective for all Georgians and all Americans. You can understand, I mean, and I'm not trying to be argumentative because that would be against my nature, but you can understand people being skeptical about any government claim that any government program is going to reduce cost on any Thing. That hasn't been the history of government programs. Well, I, absolutely. And, and absolutely in the sense that I think people ought to be skeptical and they ought to be thinking and they ought to be asking questions. And I think that's, that's part of our responsibility as, as, as citizens. At the same time, I also think that programs like Medicare, programs like Social Security, which I don't think anyone is saying we ought to do away with, those, those have been changed almost every year. Uh, in, in, some, in some way or, or, or in some fashion. So I, I don't think this is a new concept to the American people, that we have big legislation, we have big programs that are out there to help people because they meet a need, and they do need to be changed over time. So I think this is, this is on par with that, with those other two programs. Yeah, I think you just outlined, and I've spoken to this often, the trap that Republicans are probably setting for themselves on this. They find themselves um, being in a position, uh, I said this to a Republican member of Congress just this morning, you guys are banking on its failure. I mean, that, that's your whole premise. If, if Obamacare succeeds or is perceived as being a success, it's almost as though Republicans don't have any cards left in the deck. Well, I think that's right. I, I think the idea that they're banking on not on, on a program not succeeding that's out to help people to give access to health care, you know, to, to you know to, to cover individuals with, with pre existing health conditions, I mean, I don't think that's a recipe for, for, for success politically. Uh, in terms of your own success politically, other issues that you're out there addressing, probably hearing about uh, the Senate and the House will go back to work after Labor Day, working on, among other things, immigration. What do you make of the immigration issue and the prospects for getting something done there? Well, I'm hopeful about that. You know, you know, we did have a, a bill come out of the Senate, so I'm hopeful that the that the Cong- that the House of Representatives will really have something to offer in a meaningful and a productive way. Because again, that's another piece of legislation that our country needs. We need to create opportunities for individuals who want to who want to be in this country, who want to be productive, who want to contribute. Uh, so I think we absolutely need to have some some forward movement on that too. Dr. Bronco Ronald-Levachki, how goes the campaign? I mean, just back from Washington, the March on Washington there, what do you do in terms of, A, you know, keeping that day job running, and then, B, being a Senate candidate? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a balance. You know, I, I wish I had the luxury of giving up my practice, uh, you know, in order to do the campaigning full-time, and yet I understand I've got a moral uh, obligation uh, to, to, treat, to, to continue treating the patients who have, who have entrusted me with their care for a number of years. And that's my, my number one. My, my number one priority is still caring for them, and I'm going to do everything I can with the rest of my time to make time to go out there and meet the voters of Georgia and convince them that I am the person who is going to best represent them and their interests uh, up in the Capitol. Now, you're online someplace, right? I'm online. We have a new website. Uh, it's Dr. Rad for Senate. Dot com d r r a d f o r s e n a t e dot com. Please that check it out. Doesn't make you spell the Radlovansky thing. Just Doctor Rad for Senate. <laughs> Doctor Bronco Radlovansky. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Quick break. When we come back, you'll hear from a candidate for Congress, State Rep.